recipes and toppiness, and I'm excited to show you how to prepare a spaghetti squash today. So spaghetti squash is a winter vegetable, which means that it is in season right now, and it will be in season all winter long. So it's a really great thing to add to your repertoire. Now, when I first tried a spaghetti squash, I was under the impression that it was going to taste like pasta and it does not. So I do think it's really important to remember that spaghetti squash is a vegetable, it's not a pasta, and so the taste and the texture are gonna be just a little bit different than traditional pasta. It does work really well as a spaghetti substitute, however, um, but there are a few things that you'll wanna keep in mind if you're planning to use spaghetti squash instead of pasta. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is just how to prepare this guy. Um, so typically spaghetti squash have a really tough outer, outer shell, outer peel, um, sometimes they're so tough that it's really difficult even to cut it when it's raw. Um, if you can cut it when it's raw, then um, similar to other squash, you'll use a chef's knife and you'll cut um, on a cutting board, you'll set it down and you'll cut the, the end off and then you'll cut it in half. Inside there are seeds similar to acorn squash or butternut squash, the other um, winter squashes we have. I'm not a huge fan of roasting the squash seeds from spaghetti squash, so I would tend to throw those away, um, but you'll just scoop them out similar to any of those other squash. If your squash is too tough to cut, um, you can actually cook it when it is whole, but you need to pierce it with a fork first. Otherwise, it could build up pressure inside and actually explode. So nobody wants an exploding squash. Squash. You can cook it either in the microwave, you can cook it on the stove in a pot of boiling water, or you can roast it. Um, and you can do that either whole or in half. So if you're not able to cut it in half because it's too tough, then take a fork, stab it a couple of times, lay, again, lay it down on a cutting board first so you don't hurt yourself, and stab it really hard. Um, you'll wanna make sure that there's it's pierced several times and that'll let out the steam while it's cooking. So if you're cooking it whole, it is gonna take more time. Again, boiling, roasting in the oven, or um, you can even microwave this. Um, typically, a whole squash will take about an hour to until it's completely done. If you are able to cut this in half and scoop out the seeds, then you can place it in a roasting pan like I did earlier and uh, roast it at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. It depends on the size of your squash, how long it's gonna take. And so the real way to test whether or not your squash is done is when it is done, you'll be able to insert a fork and it'll be really, really soft and easy to do that. If it's not soft and easy to do that, put it back in and continue to cook until it's really, really soft. If you um, don't cook your squash enough, then it'll be kind of crunchy and it'll be less similar to pasta. And so I recommend to, to cook this really, really well, especially if you're trying to substitute it for pasta. If you overcook your squash, it tends to be a little bit mushy. So when it is done, this is the most magical thing about squash. Um, if you've been able to scoop out the seeds uh, when you cut it in half, then you're ready to go. If you haven't scooped out the seeds yet, if you cut it in half after cooking, then you'll want to um, scoop out the stringy innards and the seeds and discard those. And then you'll take a fork and you'll simply run it along the squash and it literally becomes spaghetti. This is why I call spaghetti squash a magical squash. So from there, these strands are ready to eat. You can either put pasta sauce on them and just eat them like spaghetti. Or one of my favorite things to do is to make an Italian bake. I have a spaghetti squash Italian bake. So I actually scrape this into the same dish that I roasted it in. I always use just a little bit of cooking spray to make sure that it doesn't um, stick to the bottom of the pan. But then I go ahead and I scoop my spaghetti squash right back into that dish. And I like to do this spaghetti squash. Uh, this brings me to my second point, which is uh, cooking your spaghetti squash in a way that tastes really good. So spaghetti squash, like other vegetables, is pretty bland when it starts out, um, which is really nice because you can tell it what you want it to taste like. So this is a pretty versatile uh, vegetable. For example, I have a recipe for Greek Italian or Greek spaghetti squash, which has can be served either hot or cold and has feta cheese and uh, Kalamata olives and it has a really different flavor um, But more traditionally 
because it looks like spaghetti, we use these Italian flavors. So what you'll wanna do with this is to make sure that you have a recipe that has a lot of flavor. Um, so I have some spaghetti sauce simmering behind me that I've been cooking all afternoon with some meat in it. If you wanna use a vegetarian version, I recommend to cook with mushrooms to give it a sort of umami, really meaty and rich flavor. And putting that on your spaghetti squash will make it taste really good. So once you've got all of your spaghetti squash, and it's in your dish, you can sprinkle it with a little bit of salt and pepper and then layer on the, the spaghetti sauce and the cheese and bake it in the oven for about 20 minutes just until it's hot and bubbly all the way through. And that will give you a really, really tasty dish. So the key with that recipe is the ratios of how much spaghetti squash to the other flavors you have. Because again, spaghetti squash is gonna have the least amount of flavor. Now I love doing dishes like this because you don't have any grains, so it's naturally gluten-free if you have anyone with celiac disease in your life. And it's also got your vegetable baked in. So it's really easy to get your half plate of vegetables and even include something like garlic bread or dessert on the side if you're looking to to enjoy some fun carbs with it so so that's my biggest recommendation I'll post a link to that spaghetti squash Italian bake if you would like to try it out um, now I want to talk just a little bit uh, quickly how to store your spaghetti squash because since it is a winter squash again these will store all winter long which is awesome they um, come ripe in the fall and will store for months if you if you store them correctly so just like the other squash you've been talking about you need a dry cool location to store these. And I want to show you what happens if you um, end up storing them. Oh, where's my guy? Never mind. Um, <laughs> if you store them too long, I will post a picture of what can happen. It actually uh, dehydrates and uh, it doesn't go bad necessarily if you keep it dry um, it just dehydrates and and becomes a sort of a hollow shell so um, unlike other squash which um, it, now if it is too damp or moist then it can start to mold so you want to keep an eye on it um, but as long as your squash is firm if you don't see any d dents or damages um, then it will store for months so um, really great to use all winter long Again, a really nice way to include a lot of vegetables as a main dish and um, using lots of flavors, uh, it's a, it'll be a popular dish all the way around. So I'm excited for you to try it. Again, I'll drop the link. If you have other questions about other winter squash, make sure to post them or send me a message. I'm always happy to answer uh, specific questions that you guys have. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Bye-bye.